So I thought I'd do an update on a new tank that I've had for several months and haven't even done a YouTube video on it. Sorry I'm looking a little blue right now, but uh, the blue lights in here are just uh, giving that effect. I'm going to go ahead and put on one of those Polyp Lab um, filter um, dealies uh, when I actually film the tank. But I just wanted to tell you a little bit about this. Um, if you remember, I had a BioCube in this same corner. Um, the last videos I did on that were basically when I was taking it down, or about to, I forget. I had some major problems uh, with the lighting on it. Um, so uh, instead of investing a bunch of new money on lighting, I decided to invest a bunch of new money in a tank, and this is what I came up with. There goes my ATO putting water into the tank. You can probably hear that, but anyway, we'll continue on. What this is is a Red Sea... Uh, Max E260, so it's got a 56 gallon display, a 13 gallon uh, rear sump, and then you can upgrade to a 12 gallon sump underneath the cabinet, which I did. Um, I got that kit and it works real well. I've upgraded the skimmer. I'm going to take you through all the equipment and show you what I got running. Uh, but for now, let's go ahead and take a look at everything and uh, I'll show you what I got. Okay, so here's a look at the display. Uh, we'll go through first and uh, just kind of check out the corals and the livestock and everything that I've got in here. And then we'll look at the equipment. Um, people seem to like the eye candy better than the equipment. But at any rate, um, either one is kind of fun to look at, especially when you're talking about a new tank. Um, first thing that you'll notice is in the middle there, I've got two uh, bubble tip anemones, rose tips, and then you can see the reflection of a third one. Well, you can see it back there. These all came from the 125 gallon. Uh, I moved them over to this tank because I wanted this tank to be more of a softy, um, you know, euphilia based. And then I thought NEMS would fit in perfectly uh, with the nice soft swaying motion that they give. So I just thought that they would do uh, be a better addition to this tank than where they were over in the other tank. They were taking up a lot of real estate over there that uh, could be used for corals. Um, so, that's kind of, I guess you'd say, the centerpiece of the tank. I brought over the clownfish pair from that tank and then moved the snow, snowflake clownfish that were in uh, the BioCube over to the 125. So, but these guys are, um, you know, they have a great relationship with these NEMs. They were familiar with them in the other tank, so there's a constant hosting uh, relationship going on there, so that's pretty cool. Right in front of you here, this is the, I believe that is the Solaras, I think. Yeah. And then this is the Neon Dottie back that I have. I've got four green Chromis. Got a long nose hawkfish hanging out up there on that Monty piece. I guess decided to just kind of go into the fish. I got the firefish that was back in the tank previously in the bio cube and back there I've got a new royal grandma I lost the other one some other items that um, or some other pieces of livestock that are hiding right now um, are I've got two gobies I've got a Randalls and a Wheelers uh, the Wheelers comes out a lot the Randalls honestly hasn't come out um, in the past week since I purchased him and then I got a pistol shrimp for each there's all also a six line wrasse right there. And I've got uh, two fire shrimp and one cleaner shrimp and a couple of peppermint shrimp. So that covers the fish and invert livestock. Well, other than the cleanup crew type snails, um, hermit crabs, that type of thing. I got your basic cleanup crew. We can go through and talk about the nems and corals. You can see up front and on the side and back there, I've got a few, um, uh, rock nems. There's another one in there. Um, I've got, uh, I grabbed a chunk of uh, green star polyps from the other tank and brought it over. This mushroom right here was in uh, the bio cube. Uh, I've got a few different types of zoas, pallies, that type of thing. Um, that is some sort of a hammer coral that um, really hasn't opened up as much as I'd like it to. I've got some of the orange and purple colored mushrooms that were from the colony in the 125. 
and then uh, some different euphelia along here, a couple types of frog spawn and hammers. Got this nice hammer colony here just last weekend, really digging that. Um, I've got the uh, frog spawn colony that was in the bio cube and then when I started having problems I moved it over to the 125 so that should look familiar. It's doing not as good as it once was but it's still doing okay. Some more euphelia throughout here, hammers and frog spawn, that type of thing. Got a Duncan recently at the, at the coral swap in our area. This leather cabbage uh, up here is bleaching out massively so I gotta figure something out there. This is a, I forget what kind of hammer, but my buddy Scott, Cyber Aquarius, sent that to me a few months ago. It almost died in the bio cube, but it's starting to bounce back. And then I got a new um, type of a toadstool up here that's uh, got green polyps. And then the original toadstool that was over in the 125, but started in the bio cube is behind it. It's not doing as well as it should, but it's still okay. Got these uh, pallies or zoas along through here and down here. Some of the original green trumpet that Scott Cyber Aquarius had sent me way back when I first started the bio cube. Um, so that's pretty cool. Um, this is all a colony I brought over from the 125. And then there's a couple throughout here. But overall, I'm really digging this tank. I like the look of it. You know, it's a it's my first rimless tank of either salt or fresh water. So that's pretty cool. And um, it's a sturdy tank. It's a sleek tank. Um, it's a good size, not too big, not too small. Um, I'm really liking the fact that I'm gonna have a bigger water column um, so that it's more forgiving compared to the BioCube. Um, overall, I'm just super happy with it. Um, I'll go ahead now and show you some of the equipment and we'll kind of go from there. I'm just gonna take off the filter for that part. So we're gonna start here with the Red Sea lights. These are the Red Sea, I believe they're called the Red Sea 90s. And so far, so good with them. There is an app um, that you hook these up with uh, right on your phone and can control it. Um, so I've heard nothing but good stuff about these and so far my um, experience is good. I picked up one of these uh, custom made tops. Here is the feeding hole here. I'm blanking out on the brand right now, but it's a popular brand out there that a lot of people use. And I'll just kind of give you a side shot of the tank as we go down underneath and check out equipment. Open her up and turn on the light. So here is a look under the hood. Um, I guess let's start with the skimmer. I upgraded, uh, there was a skimmer that came with it that went in the rear sump. And I decided to upgrade it since I bought the um, under cabinet sump upgrade kit. I decided to upgrade the skimmer as well and went with this uh, Red Sea Reefer Skimmer. So far it's done real good for me. A couple features I like about it that I haven't had in a skimmer before is one is this hose here. I'm not gonna do it, but you can empty out the cup from this hose right here into like a bucket. That way if you wanted to quickly empty it without taking off the entire cup and bringing it to the area where you would normally rinse it out, you can do that, it's kind of cool. Um, the sump. What it comes with is um, there are there's an area for two filter socks. I bought a CJ pump back there. The plumbing is right here. Very easy to hook up if you are thinking about buying one of these units and you're wondering about hooking up the the under cabinet sump. Again, this sump is an optional upgrade that you have to pay for. I think it was 300 bucks or something like that. It's glass. It's square and it fits basically perfectly under here. There's not a lot of extra room um, as far as, uh, you know, it comes right up to the end and over there too, but it's cool. And it can actually even be hooked up as an afterthought once the display is already filled with water and up and running. Um, I'm not gonna go through how that's done. I didn't do it that way, but um, it can be done. One cool thing is this kind of control center. You've got, there's a cover on it. 
I'm not gonna take it off right now because my cords are packed and they're pretty good, but there's an outlet for up to seven items and you can see they're labeled light, blah, blah, blah. And then it corresponds down here with a switch for each of these items. So like if I wanted to turn off my skimmer, this is the top one. I would just hit the button and it would turn off. I didn't do it there, but. So that's kind of cool. Um, I used the JBO pump, dosing pump from my old BioCube. So I'm dosing just calcium and alkalinity at this point, everything else I'm hand dosing. I went and purchased one of these eShops ATO um, reservoirs uh, like I have in the 125. This is the five gallon instead of the 10. And then what I've done is I've run, you can see, see the white tubing behind here. I've run it straight from my RO system to here. So I'm pumping RO water into here and then the ATO works and um, keeps the tank topped off. And you can see I've got the Tunzi Osmolator ATO just like I've got in the 125. And then I reused the, the uh, Vortec MP10 back there that I had on the old BioCube. There it is. One other upgrade since I'm in the display again is I picked up some of these, um, I don't know what you call them, random flow generator, because um, it's just got on the return, on the return output or outlet, whatever you want to call it, it was just a straight tube, so I put that in there. There's also two returns on each side, and then two inlets for if you're using the um, rear sump, um, there's two pumps back there that uh, do the work for you. I'm still running those just mainly for flow and it works out real well. They, they recommended that you do that even if you are running this, uh, this sump below. I've got my old dosing reservoir that I keep my, um, I use Reef Carbonate by Seachem and Calcification by um, Seachem while it's uh, Oh, Seachem's in-store only brand, I forget what it is. And then the heater fell down here, but it's attached. I'm running the JBJ True Temp. You can see it down there. It's got the uh, controller box and the heater is right in the sump. So I'm keeping everything out of the display. <clears throat> A couple other things up here. It's, I bought the upgrade so that I can keep the rear sump covered, but I keep uh, media in the media rack that came with it, which is right here. Everything else is empty, but I'm, I'm running some carbon, some Fosgard, and some, uh, oh, that other Seacam product, the, the white stuff that comes in the little white pack, in the little packets. Um, I'm blanking out right now. Puregen. So that's nice, it keeps everything kind of buttoned up and uh, looking good. Other than that, underneath here, that's basically about it. Um, can't think of anything I'm missing. I've got some pond matrix rolling in here as well for my bio. Um, and I've been pretty happy with the Seachem filters, or Seachem, uh, Red Sea filter socks so far, so that's good. I guess we'll just give you one last look at the display. I'm gonna put the filter back on and then we'll cut the video off here. All right, that gives you a little bit better idea. So overall, I'm super happy with this. I know a lot of the coral still has some growing in to do and isn't looking great. Some pieces are looking better than others. Still looking to maybe add a few more pieces of fish or pieces, a few more fish if I find the right thing. Oh, there's a starfish too, I forgot to show you that before but uh, pretty happy with this um, if you're new to this channel and you like what you see make sure you hit that subscribe button as well as the notification bell click like also in the comments below let me know what your favorite fish is what your favorite coral is that you saw in this tank if you have any questions if you have any experience with red sea tanks and what your thoughts are on it and just any other general questions or comments i'd really love to interact with you about this tank and uh 
I apologize that I didn't do a kind of a setup series. I started recording it and I just got so busy over the last many months that um, it all, as they say, is on the chopping room floor or whatever, whatever that phrase is, but it didn't work out. <laughs> Um, shot a bunch of footage and never got around to putting it together and this tank's been running now for a good two three months So I thought I should just give you guys an update on it and show you what I got All right. Thanks for watching and until next video. We'll see you later